Oh, Lord. 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 It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, yo. Welcome to the 280 Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Lowe's Def. And I'm here with another special guest. You know what I mean? We're we, we doing some black girl magic today. You know what I mean? Um, introduce yourself, young lady. Hello, everyone. My name is Kayla Michael. I am the proud owner and CEO of Motherhood. Mm, motherhood. I like that. I like that. I like how that sounds. Whatever. And we're we gonna get into all of that. Whatever. But I'm sure it has to. It, I'm sure it is. It's some some type of black girl magic like that you're working Absolutely. with. A whole lot of it. Whole lot of it. That's a suck. That's a suck. So all right. So speaking. Just speaking of you know being a woman and just people and and things like that. Let me ask you a question, Kayla. Okay. Do you want to be married? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Might um, have to rim up for this one. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> and so, it's funny because because that's how like oh oh she oh uh, hey yeah you know I mean I are you single are you because I I don't want to put you out there like yo brothers yeah you know I mean you got a got a nice lady right here chocolate you know what I'm saying you know I am completely single. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. All right. So mm-hmm. like all right, and and this is not out. Are you familiar with Kevin Samuels at all? Slightly. All right. Well, all right. This I'm not trying to scare you or nothing like that. I just sometimes he. It has to do with the glasses. That's always like. That's my god. Yeah, that's the Godfather. He's he's he. All right. If you just watch clips, if you take him out of context, he might sound really crazy. But he be talking some stuff. But anyway, he um. That's how sometimes his conversations start. He'd be like, "Do you want to be married? Whatever." But anyway, side side note. That was a tangent. But anyway, so you all right. So you want to be married? So all right. When you're talking about like seriously dating somebody up until the time that you get married, is there like a time limit that should be placed on something like that? Like, or does it depend? Because like, all right, so the reason I say that, because like with him, he he does promote marriage. I mean, he, he's talking big about marriage and stuff like that. And like for him, it's like, yo, if, if you've been talking for, I mean, you shouldn't be dating for more than two years, according to him. You know what I mean, like you should know and, and get married because other than that, you're wasting time. And I, I've heard some other people saying like, no, you need you need more time. Some people think you need less, like, you know what I mean, whatever. So what, what would you say? Do you, you, you think there should be some type of time limit from like, and I'm talking about serious dating, not just like getting a number and just not from the day you meet that person, but like y'all getting involved. Up until the time y'all decide y'all gonna, it's, it should there be some type of time limit? I'm just gonna play devil's advocate. I'm okay. gonna say yes and no. Okay. Um, on the yes part, speaking personally, if that was the case, going off of the beliefs that you know Samuel said, I would have been married by now. Yeah. Okay. It didn't happen that way. You know what I mean? So. With that being said, it's like you can't rush anybody to do something that they don't want to do. Not saying that they don't want to do it. Yeah. But if you're not ready, you're not ready. And you can't fault that person for not being ready because they may love the shit out of you. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, marriage is, marriage is a business. I mean, I personally, personally think marriage is a business. Do I want to get married? Yes. Yeah. Um, will there be money involved? Absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, hindsight, I love you, but marriage is a business. Okay. So, I just really feel like it just depends on the people. It just depends on the dynamics of their love and their connection okay. and what they believe in, honestly. But, okay. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put a time limit on it, but I wouldn't wait another seven years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, like, w- for you, for you, then, what, what is the limit like of dating somebody? And it's like, all right, bro, if we not getting married, it's it's over. Like, this, we gotta cut this. We gotta cut our losses here at, at some point. If you would have asked me this question five years ago, I would have gave you a date. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but now I have children. The mm, dynamic. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I can't, I, I don't know. Like, I can't say, well, you have a month or, excuse me, not even a month. You got a year. You yeah. got two years to marry me or I'm out, like, on some Jocelyn shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you can't do that. You can't Especially do that. Especially kids are involved. So, I mean, let it flow. Yeah, definitely. I think I think definitely um, kids, um, especially if, if you have, well, it, 
either or if you're coming into a situation with kids like if you're if it's like you know gonna be like a stepdad type situation stepmom situation i think it, it kind of can skew the numbers whatever um and if or or even if you know because in the black community we tend to have kids before we get married if you have kids to that your baby mom baby dad whatever your significant other that can kind of skew like the timeline too, because now you're kind of focused, especially if you had kids somewhat young or in your early twenties, you're focused on, yeah, you're playing house and you're trying to kind of build yourself up so you can provide the best life for your kid. And then I think sometimes that relationship aspect kind of gets neglected a little bit and it kind of messes up the, the time. So like, I don't know. I just, I just, I just wondered like uh, with that. So, so, and also too, so then, so then you're against like deadlines. Like, so just say if we was together for like five years, whatever, and you're like, yo, all right, man, we've been together five years. All right, man, you got six more months (laughs) or, or I'm leaving you. Is that, is that, is that unfair or is that, is that reasonable? I don't know. Is that kind of crazy? Like, I don't I never been in that situation. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like your per, your personality you wouldn't do are you saying like you wouldn't do nothing like that? I mean, in hindsight, knowing what I've been through, I wouldn't mm-hmm. wait that long. Okay. Like, I, would, mm-hmm. I would like a, 2 years. I okay. mean, if we a steady, steady. Steady, steady, like monogamous, <laughs> you my only one. All that. All that. All that. Yeah, like perfect See, situation like that. Like two I years is pretty enough. Then, but I would definitely mention marriage to him. Like, hey, what are your thoughts about it? But we would have already had this conversation in the past if we already together for two years. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, within that time, like within those two years, you want to like throw little questions and little hints. Hey, how you feel about marriage? Like, yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. You want to fill fill them out. So, I mean. Mm-hmm. Once you throw them hints in there and fill them out, then you make your move. And- all right. That's what's up. So do you think, all right, so, and this is another question. Um, what, do you, what do you think in terms of, like, marriage, you know what I mean, do you think it's more for men or more for women, or is it, because I, I feel like, I personally feel like it's, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So, we about to have some kids running around the back, whatever. <laughs> no, not tonight. Go lay down. Oh. Go. It's all good. It's all good. It happens. What was the question? I'm sorry. Oh no. I, well, I was about to ask the question. So, so, so yeah. Um, do you think that marriage is more? Is it is it more beneficial for women or more beneficial for men? Um, and what, well, I mean, just in so, just in any aspect. Like, do you feel like like women get more of the benefit out of marriage, or do men get more of a benefit out of marriage? And, 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 and the re- and, well, all right. P- pause. Let me. See. And the reason I'm prefacing that is like, you know, are do you feel like men are ever gung ho about marriage, or is it something well, that they just feel like they got to do? I, I feel like most men are pretty much pressured into it. Not most. <laughs> um, some are probably uh, pressured into it. Okay. But you have the other half that are, that genuinely want to be married. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, I mean. I can't, I don't know. That's that's a good one. Yeah. I don't know. But I never thought of being married as having that as a benefit or that okay. being a benefit. I mean, it could be, but yeah. And what well, ask Yeah, true, true. Maybe, man, I mean, I guess, well, financially, I think it probably well, it depends. I guess it all depends on how much the, each party is making, whatever. You know what I mean? Like maybe, right. or even if she don't make money, maybe she comes from a family of money, whatever. All right. So, so then what I would say is, so, cause you just said like some men generally want to be married of all men out there. What percentage of men gen- you, you think <laughs> genuinely want to be married? I, don't, I just, <laughs> yeah. Like if you had to, if ballpark, if you had to just in your head, no stats involved, just on top of your head, you think what percentage of men genuinely want to be married? I'm going to give my brothers hope. I'm going to give the men hope period. I'm going to say 30%. All right, that's actually, I was thinking 20, so that's higher than what I thought. So actually, all right, that's actually, that's that's fair. That's I think that's realistic, you know what I mean? So 30% of men, like, they're like, yes, I know I want, you know what I mean? This is what I want to do. Now, they don't they don't plan it like some women do, you know what I mean? Y'all be playing mash and shit I like just that. Don't and like, low. like, y'all really don't care. Y'all just be wanting to get the shit done and over with, like, 
Yeah, yeah. And then, but then also too, but yeah, if we're not ready, we're not ready. Cause yeah, it, at the end of the day, we kind of control that part of it. You, or a matter of fact, how, how do you feel about women proposing to men? Is that kind of like, I think that's wild. Oh. Like, that's wild. I wouldn't do it. Okay. I thought, I thought you said I would do it, but no, you, I'm uh, not. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not, yeah. You got to have some respect for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I'm not doing, I mean, it's not even about respect to each his own. I mean, Chrissy set the bar. Did she, re- Chrissy who? Chrissy. Uh, Jim Jones, Chrissy? Or Chrissy Teigen? Uh, no, Jim jo- Chrissy she, Teigen she, 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 No, no, that's why I was wondering what Chrissy was talking about. <laughs> talking about Jim's Chrissy. She actually, pro- like, I'm, I kind of remember that, but, like, I thought that was, like, fake. Like, she proposed to Jim? He, he didn't did. say, he didn't say yes, though, right? Did he? I can't remember what happened on the episode, but she definitely proposed to him. Like she got on her knee and everything. Did she get on the knee? I don't remember if she got on the knee. Because that, she, like, you got. She definitely had the ring out. So. Yuck! So, like, an engagement ring for a man? That's wild. <laughs> yuck. What's up? Did you say yuck? Well, I, maybe I did. I don't know. That's kind of that's oh. wild. That's wild to me, but. All right, let's 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 move on. Let's move on. So, um, we're gonna get into some controversy, even though that might have been a little bit like, oh, people talking about that. No, no, that's why I was wondering what Chrissy was talking about. Talking about Jim's Chrissy. She actually like I'm. I kind of remember that, but like I thought that was like fake. Like she proposed to Jim. He didn't say he didn't say yes though, right? Did he? I can't remember what happened on the episode, but she definitely proposed to him. Like she got on her knees and everything. Did she get on the knee? I don't remember if she got on the beat. Because that, she, like, you got She definitely had the ring out, so. Yuck. So, like, an engagement ring for a man? That's wild. <laughs> yuck. What's up? Did you say yuck? Well, I, maybe I did. I don't know. That's kind of, that's oh. wild. That's wild to me. But, all right, let's 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 move on. Let's move on. So, um, we're going to get into some controversy, even though that might have been a little bit like, oh, people talking about that. But, all right, man. Uh, Talk about Bill Cosby, man. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. He's out. He's out. Listen, my graduation year, when I graduated Lincoln, Bill Cosby was our keynote speaker. Okay. We were hype. Okay. We hype. That's it. I mean, I ain't got nothing. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you got to say like i like all right, i ain't all right. All right, yeah so so i i've been i've been pretty like neutral the whole time because and here's the thing i'm not neutral on sexual assault or rape i'm not neutral on that i'm neutral on retroactive cases cases that might not necessarily have physical evidence that we could prove it whatever um so i'm, I'm neutral to that because i'm like I, one i'm not gonna I've learned too much that like you can't put too much faith in any of these celebrities, right? You know I mean, like you're gonna and get you let put nothing past nobody. Facts, facts, nobody. Facts. So like, I, it's like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put too much faith in him and, and say, yeah, oh man, they're lying, they're whatever, whatever. But then also too, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just go crazy on the other side where it's like, yeah, that man, he because it's like I don't even know they they can't. I mean, I, I don't think they, they never actually prove proved that he did this, whatever. So he's he's out. And do you know why he's out? Do did you do you kind of understand why he's out? I don't. Okay. I don't out. Okay. So all right. So I, I'll explain a little bit. So um, so apparently um back probably about 10 years ago, whatever, when he he had a civil he had a civil case, whatever, and in that civil case, he gave a deposition. And in that deposition, he was he was allowed to speak freely. But in a way where he wasn't supposed to be incriminated. You know what I mean? Like it was like his Fifth Amendment rights, whatever. And he didn't say anything like, oh, I did this, I did that. But he did admit that, like, you know, there was some pills. But, you know, and, and all these women say, like, they've, you know, they took pills that he gave them, whatever. You know what I mean? Like they they admit to that, whatever. Um, but so then, so then um that that was supposed to be like sworn testimony, wasn't supposed to be used, whatever. And it was a deal that he made with the DA. So then, like, a new DA comes in, whatever, and he tries to disregard that, and he basically is like, no. So then they use some of that deposition, and it basically, like, violated his rights, and basically he he kind of got an unfair trial, so, so to speak. So 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 that's why they released him, because the Supreme Court, they ruled, they said, no, like, you violated his Fifth Amendment rights. This this testimony was not supposed to be used, and it really didn't, it didn't really say much anyway, like, to 
he didn't admit like I raped women. Like he didn't say nothing like that anyway. Uh, but it just it just called into question some things, whatever. Um, so some people are saying that he got off on a technicality, but a fair but due process should never be a, a technicality. You know what I mean? Like everybody should get a fair trial, right? Even if even if you don't like the person or even if whatever they're charged with is is kind of heinous, everybody should get a, a fair trial. So um, so he's out. So do you have any thoughts about him being out or are you just kind of like uh um I've always been on the fence about the whole situation because my whole thing is people can say whatever. I mean, we're all entitled to our own opinion, but me personally, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So how can I really have an opinion on a matter? Like, of course, accusations were made on numerous women. Mm -hmm. Six, I think it was 60 people that accused him. That, so that, yeah, that's why it makes it like, well, damn, 60, but, 60 women lying? I don't know. But I also heard, I also heard that Bill Cosby had intentions on buying out one of a uh, TV, one of the major TV networks. Yeah, MB, I heard NBC, yeah. And he wanted to turn it into an all-black network. Mm, fire. And they wasn't having that. So... I heard that what they did was they collected women. I don't know how true it is. Don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard they collected women to file lawsuits against him. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. yeah. So, so the people that defend Bill Cosby, this does look. It look. It makes them look smart. You know what I mean, this this whole right. thing because it's like, all right. If he did it, if he did do it, you know what I mean, and, and you're going to convict him of this, you have to do it. There's a way that you have to do it. You have to, it has to be, yeah, it has a, it's a process, whatever. And, and basically, you know, it, it kind of supports their narrative where, like, they, they try to railroad him. You know what I mean? They try to make it, you know, they try to, like, just, you know, get all these people together and, and you know, trying to bring down a black man, whatever. So those people kind of, right, today, those people look kind of smart. But they, but in some in some circles, they look kind of crazy because then it makes it seem like, well, you know, what if he did though? But it's like uh, I don't know. It, it's this weird double jeopardy type thing. I think. I mean, I mean, how would you ever know? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, how, no, unless you was physically there. Yeah, like, how would you form an opinion about this woman and this man, and he gave me this. Listen, I'm not doubting nobody's story. Yeah, but I, I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, yeah, I feel you. So, so one last thing though, with that though, is is the fact that um, have have you heard like uh, Felicia Rashad? Like she's getting under fire because she came out and supported him. She said, you know, she she posted, a, you know, I don't know if it was a tweet or message. She said justice has been served. You know what I mean? And and basically, like she was in kind of expression. She was in support of Bill Cosby. Like you know, like they did the right thing, whatever. So then, you know, now she's the dean of she's the dean of Howard University. I don't know if you know that fine arts. So now they're they're like, you know, she had to kind of backtrack a little bit. She tried she had to make a statement that said that she's not against any victims. And then it seemed like she had to make another statement. Um, and obviously, probably Howard made her make this statement. It's talking about like being like sensitivity training and, and learning about how to how to deal with this type of stuff. So like so like in, in the black community, do do we are we just too quick to kind of cancel each other? You know what I mean? Like because it seems like everybody's like, oh Felicia Rashad, how could you how could you do this? Whatever. I think <laughs> I think we as a community follow trends. Mm. It's not about what we believe because I can believe one thing or Somebody could believe something, but that's not what they believe on Instagram. That's not what they believe on, you know, Facebook. So who's to say? Like, can yeah. you? Really, can you? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, yeah, I, I think, I, I don't know. I, I, I think if you support something that's like really egregious, whatever, you know what I mean? Like you can, you know what I mean? If somebody like is supporting the KKK and you find out like a politician, like, oh, you, you support the KKK. Like that's, that's crazy, whatever. But like something like this, where it's like. But to I mean, also, not even to cut you off, but to also. Nah, add, I honestly feel like if she really didn't believe or truly believe that he didn't do that, she wouldn't have made that statement knowing. True. The position that she's in right now. True, true. So, also knowing the consequences that could possibly come with that statement, or yeah. so 
I don't know. It makes you think like, damn, did he really, really do it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Yeah, I wasn't there either. Wasn't um, there. This one lady, Janice Dickinson, one of the accusers, she's like an old model from back in the day. She's like, she, yeah, she's 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 one of the crazy ones that's like one of the most vocal. Um, but she was basically saying like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed in her. And, and, and it's a white lady, so it don't really matter. I mean, what she said, but... <laughs> The judges on America's Next Top Model. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And she and basically she was saying, um, she was like, yeah, there's there's no way that she didn't she didn't sense this behavior from him, whatever. Like, yeah, I mean, she worked too close with him. But it's like, yo, if she really didn't sense anything, if he didn't do anything to her, how can you just project that onto her? Yeah, you know I'm saying like right. it's kind of weird. I mean, right. Yeah. So all right, another controversial topic. Da da da. All right, man. So a, it was a sad day last week, man. We we found out, man, that that she carried Richardson, man. Lord, she tested positive for for marijuana, whatever. Now, I got some thoughts, and I'm but I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you get the floor first, man. Oh, you want me to go first? All right, all right. So, all right. You know, I'm I'm an advocate for you know cannabis and things like that, whatever. Um, but we but also know, like, you know what I mean. Just a anything in life, there's times when you can and can't do certain things, right? There's just times when you can and cannot do it. Now, I'm not like one of these people that's like, you know, like oh, laughing at her. I don't think it's funny. I don't think I think it's, it's I think it's sad and unfortunate that this that that she made it, and, and all, all ultimately, I'm it's sad and unfortunate that she made that decision because that's one thing she did own it. She did own up to it, whatever. I mean, so she admitted. It. So we cannot be mad. I mean, whatever. So my thoughts are, I got a couple of things. So one thing is that um, people keep keep um, kind of interchanging or conflating this idea of banned substances versus performance enhancing drugs. And under and what I think people need to understand is that yo, you can look up the banned list, whatever. It ain't and it, it's mad shit that they ban, and it's not all steroids, right? Like you can't be on any narcotics. Yeah, you know I mean, you can't be on any kind of drugs. You can't be on yo. There's there's shit like people that take like heart heart pills and blood pressure pills and stuff like that. There's certain shit that like that that's banned off these lists, whatever. So it's like, it's not just about uh, drugs that that enhance your performance. It, I think the Olympics is po or anti-doping is supposed to be like a clean athlete, completely clean. Like you don't have no kind of like whatever, not even just an advantage, but it's just like you're a clean athlete, whatever. So it's well, that. It's really completely clean. She's just but, one that caught. Yeah, yeah true, she, true. She got caught. All right. All right, so then, so yeah, all right, so then you know, we'll, we'll talk about that, whatever. I, then there's another issue where I think a lot of people are kind of trying to make it like, oh, this is like a race thing, like, oh, like, they, I mean, they got to do this to a black woman. But I'm like, well, there's other, there's dozens of other black people on the U.S. team that are black, right? So it's like they didn't test positive. What what happened with Phelps? Because he tested positive. All right, no, no, he did not. All right, see, that's oh, where, we, that, yeah, that's where we're gonna get into false comparisons too. So, so, um, and then that's one of my other points. So. Um, but yeah, so anyway, like when you think about um, just other other people, you know what I mean, and, and also we're not the only black people that are, that compete in the Olympics. It's, there's a whole continent. You know what I mean, we have the whole diaspora. Like it's black people all over the world. So I don't think it's a it's not a black thing, whatever. Um, and then um, yeah, so misinformed comparison. So a lot of people have been pulling out. My, they've been talking about Michael Phelps. They've been like, oh, this this and that, whatever. So it's like, oh, they're like keep the same energy. I don't think we want that, right? This is why we don't want it because Phelps, he never tested positive. Mm -hmm. What happened with Phelps is they found a photo of him like six months after the Olympics of him smoking weed on a bong, whatever. He lost, he lost, he lost his medals that year and he was, he got suspended for six months, whatever. So like they, but he never tested positive. It was just on a picture that he got suspended. And he got suspended. And they stripped him of his medals. Like they literally took his medals away. Whatever. Test them. What'd you say? Why didn't they test them? Well, no, he no. Everybody has to go through drug tests when they when they're competing in Olympics, whatever. But he never submitted a positive test. That's the thing. He okay. it's just an image thing. Also, too, with the Olympics, it's like yo, they somebody found a viral photo of him smoking weed, and you know, I guess the Olympics maybe they're maybe they they're too high and mighty. You know what I mean? And they need to kind of grow up or you know change whatever. But they decided to suspend him based on that picture. Um, and then, and then there's another meme that's going around where they're comparing, um, this, this woman who tested positive for steroids 
And I'm like, I don't understand that comparison because that lady got banned for four years. So it's like, uh, what, why do you keep using this? Because it's a meme where there's like, this lady tested positive for steroids and she blamed the burrito. Shakari tested positive for weed and she admitted it. But I'm like, why are y'all using this white lady? Like, she she's not in the sport. You know what I mean? Like, she got banned. Ignorant. We can't go. <laughs> like, that is so fucking ignorant. Like, <laughs> you can't base your facts off of that shit. Like, but you can't. But people do. Facts off of memes. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, this shit is disgusting, honestly. Did you realize, but did you know any of that though? Did you realize any of that? This was the first time, honestly, you've taught me something because I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, so, I Michael Phelps smoked weed and all that happened. I didn't know it was off, off of a picture. It's all off of a picture. Yep. And then, and then he got a, he got a severe punishment for that picture. You know what I'm saying? Like, and actually they, they're kind of saying, you know, she could have got a three month ban. And she got a one month ban instead. So, like, in a way, they're kind of being lenient, whatever. And then the last point I was going to make was about coping. People are like, oh, you can't tell her how to cope. And I'm like, true, I'm not telling her how to cope. I'm not telling her how to cope because what she she learned about, you know, her mother dying and a reporter telling her that her mother died. Like, yeah, that's going to make you feel some type of way. But also, too, it's like, you know, maybe maybe that just, you know, starts a bigger conversation. You know I mean, like, how how do we know how to cope with trauma you know what i mean like and are, and do we cope with trauma in the right ways you know what i'm saying like because i just think in in that situation it's probably the biggest moment in your life you know what i mean you might not get this opportunity again you know what i mean you just might not you know can you, I, can you just stay focused for three months you know what i mean like i don't know it's hard <laughs> it's hard yeah yeah i'm just gonna say like us as a people our coping skills they're not good yeah because we start to other things like you know drugs alcohol whatever the case may be so the way that she chose to cope over her mother dying was her choice but at the same time i'm just gonna play devil's advocate <sighs> knowing the sit nah, knowing the situation and position that you were in at that time mm -hmm. I would have waited. I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah. I would have loved to do it. I would have, oh my God. Like, if I was in her shoes, mm -hmm. honestly, and I don't know. But honestly, if I knew that marijuana was going to be one of the things that would keep me from, like, you know, going on to the Olympics, I probably would have put it to the side. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I feel bad for her because that was a opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And it was blown for something so much. I can't even say it's minor because some people look at smoking marijuana is just the biggest. Yeah, yeah. I and I think I think that needs to kind of stop a little bit too. Like even you could be pro, you could you could like to do it, but like come on, man. Everybody don't need to be high. Like it's just <laughs> everybody. You're right. You're right, but I feel I feel bad for her. Not yeah. bad, sorry for her, but I feel like this is definitely a learning experience for her. Yeah, definitely. And definitely going to come back stronger. I I hope she comes back stronger. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I think she will. Um, I think she's gonna make us proud. I think you know the next year it won't be Olympics, but it'll be like World Championships and stuff like that. And like hopefully she, she... got to fill her name back up. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to, yeah, not killing her at all, but it's just like, yo, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do in that situation now. And I just think the problem is that we like to be reactive with our complaints. Like, all right, why don't we be proactive? Why don't we, why don't we, yo, some, why don't somebody protest what's on the ban list before somebody tests positive? Because right, so that's start now. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Yep, let's start now for the next four years, and, and it's like, yo, all right, we don't want we don't want this included, whatever, and, because like people are like, oh, but weed doesn't do this. I'm like, yeah, but weed ain't never been legal in these sports. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean, so it's like, so, so like, what really can you do, regardless if it's legal in this state in that state? The rules have been the same for years, and yeah. that's where it's kind of like, you yeah. knew. Yeah, and she said that too, and that's the thing. She said, "I knew better. I knew my choice, but I made it. I'm human." Which, all right, we'll we'll give you we'll give you past it. Well, not a pass. Yeah. 
we'll give you, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll give you some love. We'll give you love. To own that shit. Yep. She owned it. Oh, she owned it. She owned it. Yep. Yep. All right. Good, 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 good. All right. So this is a nice segue. Nice segue. We're about to get into motherhood, right? <laughs> We're about to get into your stuff because maybe, maybe some of the stuff that you about to tell us tonight, right? Maybe this will help us with some of that coping stuff, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you got, what you got for us, whatever. But maybe, maybe, maybe some alternative things to kind of relax your mind, your body, your soul, all that good stuff. You know what I mean, um, to help you help you get through. So, Kayla, um, tell us about this brand. This this, and I, I'm assuming it because you, I talked to you a little bit, and and it seemed like motherhood is like this umbrella, and then there's like things underneath the umbrella. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. Um, okay. Very accurate. Um, motherhood is the umbrella. You know, um, it's the only thing I can personally say is not a brand. It's a lifestyle. Like, okay. I literally live this every day. Okay. Every single day, my brand is my life. So, I mean, just the different things that I have within my brand, I offer, you know, sage bundles, just anything that relates to self-care because at okay. one point in time you know I neglected everything about me mm. where I was just raggedy with it like it yeah. is what it is. like <laughs> it, it just came to a point where I just had to be like yo it's it's time for me to start getting in tune with me like who mm. am I like mm. what am I doing right now like really what am I doing yeah Okay. I started. Okay. So, all right. So, what in terms of like what what products do you? Yeah. What kind of products do you sell? Can you get like a little bit specific? Um. Yeah. Okay. So basically, main the main products that I do sell are um, different type of crystals. Um, I offer sage bundles. I offer um, um, crystal rollers, facial rollers. I also have apparel. I have tote bags. I have mask. I have tie-dye socks i do nike tie-dye socks i also do the reverse nike tie-dye socks um what else is on soap i have my organic soap i almost forgot about that um, okay I have my bars and yeah it's, it's i got a couple things going on wow wow and, you, and are you doing all this from your home like you're just doing this from the crib that's it like i make everything is handmade everything wow. is order including the socks and the soap everything is made to order yes wow nice have a storage of soap or socks just stored away like everything is handmade and made to order that's a good and, and how, so how's it going so far i mean how would you how would you say it's going it's going good like good. i can't complain like i cannot complain compared to you know when i first started because i actually launched my website on thanksgiving okay and it's going good, man. I'm thankful. I'm definitely thankful. Okay. The learning experience, definitely. Oh, uh, just just like like in terms of what? In terms of what? In terms of just like owning a business, being your own boss, mm -hmm. creating content, having products, um, making products, making sure your your customer service is on point, making sure they get their products on time. Like it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot. Well, all right. So one thing that you said, um, you said something about like um you I guess you, you were raggedy at one point in time. Can you can you <laughs> yeah, can you kind of get into like, you know, how you how you got into this? Like, you know what I mean? You just you just woke up one day and then you're just like, yo, I I'm I'm gonna start this, whatever. Like what what kind of let did you read some books? Did you watch a movie? Like did a doc you know what I mean listen to some Dr. Sebi or something like that? Like what what happened? What 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 had to happen for for you to get into this? So what happened was, I became pregnant. Obviously, okay. <laughs> but, um, okay. I was living in New York. You know, things were going good, but I ended up pregnant. Um, and I always told myself, like, I mean, it was good in New York when I was, you know, doing my own thing, didn't have no kids. But actually, raising a kid in New York, mm. on it. So. Yeah made a conscious decision to move back home and I did I moved back home with nothing really no I had nothing wow. but a metro pass that I couldn't use and about six hundred dollars yikes Oof. so 
I'm six months pregnant. Mm -hmm. I'm back in New York, living in my mom's attic. Okay. So, you know, it just all started from there. Like, I'm like, yo, what am I going to fucking do? Like, I'm back in my hometown from living in New York. I'm fucking pregnant. Some sh something's got to happen. Yeah. Like, something has to happen. So, just started writing ideas down and just started getting in tune with who I was and who I wanted to be and okay. what I and it just started from there. That's what's up. So, well, I mean, you just said, you said earlier you, you graduated from Lincoln. So you had a degree. So, like, you didn't have options or you just didn't, you didn't have a passion to do whatever that was? I mean, after I graduated from Lincoln, um, I moved to New York. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was living there for five years. And I graduated Lincoln with a bachelor's degree. Hold on, though. With a bachelor's degree in human service and religion. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So, Straight off the rip, I moved to New York. No resume, no nothing. I was winging it. The oh, whole wow. yeah. So, of course, I'm trying to, like, you know, find jobs in my field and trying to, like, build my career in the big city, mm -hmm. which was dream, but that wasn't reality. Like, okay. I was like, okay. bartending. I was serving, like, it just wasn't clicking like my the whole aspect that I have of me moving to New York and having this whole business job and working in the city I got punched in my face as soon mm -hmm. as I moved yeah, I got punched yeah in my face go sit down please and you realize like it was it's, it's not what it's cracked up to be necessarily like living in a big city like is that what it's yeah. kind of something like that yeah, it, it was. It's not cracked up to what everybody makes it to be. Like, oh, the lights. Oh, yeah. Nobody told me not to move to Brownsville when I when I went to. New oh, York. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That too. You don't know the territories of where you're at, like the neighborhoods and stuff like that. I lived on. I, I moved in the heart of Brownsville on Chester Street, but between Blake and Dumont, like. Yeah. Is that like is it Brownsville? Is that East New York? Whatever. Like I hear, I hear that that word, like that phrase, like oh, people Brown from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, Brownsville, <laughs> Brown. New okay, York is East New York. Okay, but, okay, okay. Yeah, but mm, it's well, like on the side. They're they're on the same side. If yeah. that makes sense. But it's di different. Yeah, you know I mean. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's funny because, like, you know, yeah, every, you know, if you if you grow up in a small town, everybody wants to like, oh, I want to live in a big city. I wanted to live in a big city at one point in time. Um, when I had when I had a kid though, and like, just I realized I don't like tra I don't like traffic. I don't like <laughs> I don't like lines, and I don't I like people, but I don't like strangers. Like I don't like just right. a bunch of strangers and whatever. So it's just like, eh, I guess, you know, or you know, paying for parking and shit like that. Like you can't. Where the fuck do you park when you live in New York? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where the <laughs> <No> <laughs> right? You know, what I mean? no like, yeah, people don't even have cars. Yeah, I mean, they just kind of like, you know, uh move around how they move around. Um, okay, that's 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 kind of interesting. Um, and, and yeah, I guess this the lifestyle of living in the big city is just totally different. Like, people, you know, I guess the cost the cost of living, you know, where we're from is is way different. Um, and it always makes you think like people that come from big cities that move to small towns, you wonder why the hell did they move here? But they're like they're probably because the cost of living is so much cheaper. The money is good in New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, rent is. How much For is there? Yeah, yeah. How much is there? Yeah, one bedroom in New York. Oh, I, I, I didn't have one bedroom. Okay, yeah. I had a room. Oh shit! Damn. Yeah, I had a room. Did you have a roommate? Had a house. It, 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 no, my my room was seven fifty a month, and I shared a bathroom. I shared a kitchen. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, and then if you have a kid, you, you yeah, we gotta make. I got. I can't raise my kid here. That's exactly why I moved back. Like, okay, exactly. okay. Well, it's all right. So, so talking about like some of these holistic products and things like that. One, so it, it was episode three. Um, I was talking to Jalen uh, uh, Latell, and one of our topics was, um, it was funny. It was one of our topics that people that sell these crystals and, and things like that. Like he was just saying that, like, yo, their personalities don't usually match whatever they're selling because you know it's like selling this like idea of like them being zen and just like, um, you know, just like calm and whatever and like just you know but 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 saying like yo people don't really live that life whatever so like 
I don't know. Would you say that your personality kind of matches what you're doing right now, or or did it kind of did you have to kind of evolve into that a little bit? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> uh, of course, we all grow and mature and evolve. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm Erica Badu. Okay, incense and shit every day. No, like. That's the vibe I'm getting, though. That is the vibe I get. That's the vibe you get right now? Yeah, I get the vibe, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, you know. And just some of the stuff that you post, and it's like, oh, motherhood. And it's like, I, I feel that. I'm getting that Badu vibe. I believe in that's That's just me. That's what I represent. Like, I can't portray to be anything that I'm not. And that's one thing that I struggled with for so long, just, like, trying to have this image of what people think I should look like or what people think is it or what people think I will fuck that on me like what you see is what you get and honestly what I put out is how I feel and what I believe in and I honestly don't think like me having a head wrap on or me <laughs> right wearing fucking moo's and shit should define me believe not be just me believing in what I believe in or just me owning it you know mm -hmm. what i mean like okay that's fair yeah that's fair that's fair enough um so like all right so just like can, can we get into some of these products and specifically like just like when you, when you talk about like sage bundles and things like that what what is what is that stuff like i don't know i don't know anything about it um my audience maybe they don't know anything about it um so like yeah like what you know and what's the effectiveness of this type of stuff like you know or or do you, is it kind of like a mental thing like if you believe that it's gonna work it's gonna work you know what i mean um it, it basically it, it just depends on the person honestly sage bundles are a tool used to get rid of all negative energy within a space or within a person or within an object like okay. if you feel like you're off balance or if you feel like you know every time this person comes around you or that person comes around you, you just feel off. Like sage is used to just like, basically just clear the air. Like okay. just to clear everything out. Okay. Okay. And, and, but like I said, though, is it, is it kind of like, you, it's, it's about your mental though, probably like if you believe that it works, I mean, and it's going to work or is it kind of like a placebo effect? Like, it's like, this shit don't do nothing. We just like to say it does. <laughs> and I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying like what? I mean, for me, it's it's more mental because why would you do something that you don't believe in? Like, why would you even support something that you honestly don't believe in? So, I mean, it, it's, it's all mental. Like, if you feel like, yo, something's not right. Mm -hmm. Like, the energy is off. Like, I'm not feeling this. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh snap! They these kids they wilding out. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, can can you get us? Uh, can you talk about the crystals a little bit? Um. Okay. So all right. So I know. All right. Now I I don't know anything about it. Yeah. You know I mean, like whatever. But I know somebody. I have somebody in my life. Yeah. You know I mean, like you know, a, a relative that that recently got into some of this type of stuff. Uh, talking about crystals and things like that. And, and this person, like, I just, I feel like their mood changed, but like, actually like in a negative way, like, I, and I don't know if like they're going through, I don't know if they're going through some type of mental health um, issue or not, like maybe it's like depression or whatever, whatever, but I'm like, you know, and, and they talk about they're on this spiritual journey, but it's like, but I feel like this person is like not themselves when I'm thinking like, well, if you're doing these crystals and all this, whatever, I don't know well, what it does. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead she's not herself or that person is not their self well because i i i know I mean, that yeah i mean i grew, I grew up with this person and and i felt like they had more of a, a a personality they were more social they were more like friendly nice now this person is very like just like drab and 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 they they almost like it's like depressive and i'm like well if you're on this spiritual journey isn't it supposed to like make you feel good like yeah i mean i don't know you you listen the one thing about going on a spiritual journey is you can't knock what a person goes through okay. you can't i'm not even using the right words i want i don't even want to say knock you can't damn what's the word i'm looking for 
you can't fault them for what they're going through. Okay. Okay. So as if this person knows they're going on a spiritual journey and they're starting it, maybe there are some demons that, I mean, not even demons, or maybe there are some things in that person's past that they, they got to face. Okay. Okay. And that they have to get through and go through in order to like really know who they are or just like be, be whole as a person. So, I mean, for someone from the, excuse me, from the outside looking in, you can't say that, oh, you're not the person you used to be, or you're not this bubbly or. Yeah. 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 I mean, on the journey, you're not going to be bubbly all the time. Some days it's harder than others. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's a journey. So everything ain't going to be peaches and cream, honestly. Right. So got to be kind of sensitive when you talk to people and yeah, you know, if they claim to be on a journey or whatever, but you just yeah, be- well, and and I, I think part of it is because of maybe the like I said, it's a it's a it's a, it's a relative and, and the age of this relative. I'm thinking like, do you know what you're talking about? Yeah, you know I mean, whatever. And and it's like you know, I don't know, I don't know. So I just, but I just wonder, like, I'm like, well, if I'm on a spiritual journey, like, I should be not maybe not like I'm not saying you should be like oh whatever but I, I would think that it's gonna f- fill you you know what i mean spiritually and then you're like maybe maybe you're giving out that positivity like you're not just how like long, that, how long do you think it takes for a person to honestly go through a spiritual journey because the shit don't happen like that yeah, true 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 i don't know i don't know i don't know how long it takes for somebody I, mean, it could be- I guess i guess it a lifetime right is that what you're saying is that what you're alluding to like personally saying that but i mean you never know how long a person how long their journey is so you okay. can't i yeah. mean you can go through it yeah all right so all right so let's all right let's get into the crystals though so like what i mean what do they do what like do are there certain crystals that represent certain things like what how do i you know what i mean what do i do what do i do with the crystals like i mean well each crystal has its own balance and it has its own meaning okay um, honestly it just depends on what you're looking for or what you need within yourself. Like for instance, I have onyx. This is okay. onyx. Here. And basically that's a stone of protection against like all negative energy, like and it, negative energy within your workspace, within your home, like just whatever. Onyx mm-hmm. is basically a stone of protection and it gives you like that, that guidance and that protection that you need to like, get you ahead and just keep you grounded okay okay so i mean each stone has its own personal meeting like so like, are there are there a set amount of stones like is it like yeah you know i mean or or is it like infinite kind of like i mean you could infinite honestly there's really? so many like okay i have a whole book like of crystals that just gets wow. like how like it yeah. says crystal like the crystal and this is the first one Okay. Oh, there's more additions than that. This is the first one. There's like four out now. What? Oh, it's intense. Like it's All intense. Right. We're getting yeah, yeah. No, no, keep going, keep going. Like no, I just wanted to say that like um I'm still learning and I'm okay. still as I go. So I don't want you don't want to sound like an ex yeah, portrayed that you're expert. Okay, no, no, no. I just know what I've been through and what I experienced and what I the knowledge that I've gained. Like I know a few things. Like I know some stuff. Okay. Okay. So you know. So all right. So Onyx. All right. So all right. So can you tell me? I mean, like, uh, what are what are some that you uh, use Onyx? I guess. What are some other stones that like are your like go to stones that you? you I mean, have mm-hmm. and for and what are their purposes? I guess too. I mean. Well, my always go-to stone is uh, cit- citrine. Okay. It's a stone of abundance. Okay. Within your work, within your business, it just promotes abundance, period, and also protection. So this is definitely my go-to. Okay, nice. My second go-to is definitely rose quartz, and that just represents love, self-love, period. Like, any type of love, platonic, all that. Like, it just gets you into you again it gets you knowing who you are as a person so 
would definitely be my next one. Okay, so Onyx, Citrine, and and Rose Quartz. Those are your those are your three main ones that you. Yeah, I know you got you got you hiding the kid in the back, whatever. So no, she uh, she's sitting here on my lap. She's supposed to be in bed right now, mm -hmm. but she's sneaking up. She's trying to sneak in the camera. She's oh hey, you can say hi if you want. I mean, it don't matter. I had I had a kid appearance <laughs> the other day. <laughs> Look, say hi. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just having a conversation with your mom. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'll come and talk to you. Go back later. <laughs> All right, uh, we could yeah we could uh, we could wrap this up pretty soon. So where can um you know like tell us like where where do we find some of these products? You know what I mean, do you have some? You know what I mean? Yeah, what? Yeah, so I guess you're you're selling all these different things. Where where can we find it? You know what I mean, how much you want to share prices? It don't matter. Whatever you want to do. Well, right now everything is online. Okay. I uh, currently have an online boutique. It's um, www.motherhood.shop. Okay. So um, everything that we mentioned today is definitely online. Um, as of right now, all of my crystals are definitely on sale and. Um, as well as the Nike socks. Yeah, the Nike socks are also um, on sale right now as well. So make sure you check it out and hit me up. That's what's up. So and one, one other thing, like, um, is there like a community for this kind of like locally, like that you're part of that, that you, you know, you kind of like, you know, talk to other people about this type of stuff? Or is it like, do you feel like you're like on an island and you're like the only one do, doing this or whatever? Like, I, I definitely don't feel like I'm on an island. Um, I definitely have people that I, uh, I do reach out to and ask for advice when it comes to different things. Like we may not, you know, be promoting the same business, but there's plenty of women out there um, that I've reached out to that we did business with and that we, we just help each other. Um, one person that I've <laughs> that I've really been, you know, hitting her up a lot is um Erica. Her okay. business name is um Zen. The okay. same name as my son. Okay. So um, she's, honestly, I feel like she's kind of been my mentor without her knowing it. Okay. Like I put her up and you know, ask her certain questions and she's been so kind. Like there's been times where I would hit up certain people or different people and just like introduce myself and be like hey i'm trying to do this and they'll be like well they'll just give me the cold shoulder or just mash it like no mm. i'm not right so but i can say she has been one of the people that has honestly been just so open-hearted like for real okay that's, that's good that's good and just in general and just in york like um or just you know locally whatever um like I, I I seen that you were part of. Was there some type of like black woman like sh, you know like marketplace or something like that? Was there some type of event where like it was just like like black women that oh, were selling stuff? Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you want to tell us about your experience doing that or whatever? Or that was um I believe the Black Dollar Movement. They hosted that event. Okay. Um, yeah, we they hosted that event at um, Central Market downtown. Okay. And that was amazing. Okay. Um, it was all black um, business owners. We all had our own tables, and it was it was an it was an amazing event. Like that was my second time vending. Okay, and it was great. Like the vibe was everything, and people we just all came together, and it was it was it was amazing. It that's was what's good. Up. That's what's up. Did you uh were, did you vend at um the tournament uh recently, or were you were you there? Not this okay. year. Okay, I, okay. I was there. Yeah. I didn't. Next year is that is that the goal next year to kind of be get in, in that space, whatever? That's just a, that's just a, yeah. I feel like I really feel like there is like this like it's a buzz. It's like it's a buzz going on in, in the city. You know what I mean, like I, I really feel like it's like a renaissance, like everybody is just doing all these different things, it's uh, people coming together. Um, whether you know, in all aspects. You know I mean, you got you know, you got you doing your thing, you got musicians, you got filmmakers, you got party planners, you know what I mean, which I missed that part. I missed that party. <laughs> <laughs> party man i need i need to I need to get in with bolivia and uh you know find out this the next one what do you say i said it's been long overdue this should have been happened we should have been united we should have been started our own businesses and been doing our own thing and been connecting with the community and just networking like it shouldn't have took us this long to actually just like come together but 
we here now. We so, here now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 you can't <laughs> complain about it. I mean, we here now, and 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 you know I mean, hopefully everybody supports everybody. You know, what I mean, each one teach one that type of stuff. You know I mean, so that's good. That's good. Um, all right. So, did you have a good time tonight? I did. did Mine technical difficulties and all oh that yeah y'all fans i'm not because i'm gonna cut that out from the beginning Please this, do. this this girl <laughs> is like a grandma like she don't know how to do she got a she got an iphone 5 uh she oh. I just, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she's like oh, what, what, how do i work this zoom no. like, I'll, I'll just play it i'll just play it. I, not a technical person i listen i create ideas but when the tech savvy yeah yeah not me. So, and yeah, you were, yeah, so earlier you told me you were nervous. Why were you nervous? What were you nervous about? Because, I mean. You said, and, and when you said you didn't want me to Wendy Williams you, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> For you to put me on, maybe that's a compliment. I don't know. Or that's a diss. I you don't know. know. You know how Wendy Williams, she just be gut punching niggas. Like, <laughs> for, like I, I don't know. I didn't know what to expect. Like, this is my first interview. Yeah. I bombed it, as you can see in the beginning. Like, nah, you. It was, it's okay. Everybody has. I think everybody's still adjusting to this type of thing, like zooms and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, it was definitely a learning experience, and from me getting over this, you know, I definitely want to do more. Like, most definitely, because I, I was like, I don't know. Right? What is what is Los gonna hit me? Right, with? What? Hey, like, should I write out some questions? I know, yeah, you was, yeah, well, and I mean, like I said, if you felt like, you know, you didn't get off everything you need to get off or, you know, I mean, whatever, we could do a follow-up, whatever, but I think it's good that, you know, just kind of doing a one-on-one, sometimes when people do have certain things to promote, it's, like I said, it's just easier to just kind of do it one-on-one, and then I could bring, I could bring you back on some, like, regular, whatever, just talking crazy whatever i mean but but you know what i mean maybe maybe not because you know you you ain't you ain't living that life no more you ain't living that crazy life no more you got all this you know what i mean got this Listen, aura, aura of protection over you you know what i'm saying so don't try me that's all i'm <laughs> yeah yo she used to fight back in the day you know what i'm saying that <laughs> that <laughs> we used to call a killer you know what i mean it ain't kayla we used to call a killer say that <laughs> with a-h Right, okay. right, right, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yo, so tell everybody where they can find you. Um, you know what I mean? If you have any promotions to, to get out there, do that, whatever. Yeah. Where, where can they find motherhood? Kayla. As I said earlier, you can find me on my website is www.motherhood.shop. Uh, my Facebook is my name, Kayla Michael. Instagram is underscore mother underscore hood underscore um, if you're going to be in the Harrisburg area, I will be in Harrisburg on Saturday for um, a block a block party. So I'll be posting that on my page and whatnot. So just come support, check me out, and yeah. So when this comes out, it, that the event might have already passed. I mean, so first of all, I'm going to post it when I um, okay with you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so it's not, is it this Saturday coming up? Like, yes, or is it it's the final? this Saturday coming in Harrisburg. Okay, yes. okay, that's so what's I'm up. All the details in my story, I'll also post it on my Facebook and my Instagram. So you will have the details. Nice, so, nice, nice. nice. I mean, that's, that's what's up, that's what's up. All right, man, this is a, I had, I had a good time. Yeah, you know I mean, like I said, I, I knew this girl from way back in the day. Yeah, um, you know I mean, no, not way back, but high school, yeah, you know I mean, back, so. I yeah, uh, high yeah, high school. Yeah, yeah. That's so. far enough. That's yeah, far that's, yeah, that's far enough. Yeah, we old. We old now. We old now, girl. Woo. We getting up there. We getting up there. Um, but yeah, this is another episode of Two D Plus Podcast, and we out. Peace. <laughs> All right. All right, yo, welcome to the Two Eighty Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Slows Def, and today, uh, tonight, we got a, a special segment. You know, I, I'm just doing a sports segment. Uh, with, with my mans, uh, we, we had another guest. Uh, he, he couldn't make it tonight, unfortunately, um, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, man, it, it's special because, you know, I'm just kind of doing a sports segment, going to kind of add it to an episode. I might even drop it by itself. Who knows? And um, it's also special because uh, both guests that were here and, and my guest here right with me um, is a returning guest. So I'm going to introduce him. This is my man, Quell, Quell Orr, uh, Martian Photography. You know what I mean? Purple Elephant, all that good stuff, man. Yo, man, how, how have you been since since the episode dropped, man? How have you been? What's what's new, man? Anything new? Anything cool? Um, 
I moved. That's pretty okay. much it. Okay. <laughs> well, I think you did have a new design, like when you. I think before I I, I purchased like my stuff, whatever, and, and granted, you know, what I mean, I, and shout out to Quell, man. He yo, he does good bit. Yo, everybody, yo, if you haven't cop no purple elephant, yo, cop that joint. The hats are like a one, like that denim hat, fam. Like I need to buy another one because I had I had I gave that as a gift. Um, and I need to, I need to get one for myself cause that joint is hard and you know, I'm, I'm on the hats now I'm back. I'm, I'm wearing hats and shout out to my young bull. Yeah. You know I mean, G high mode, got that G high mode on. You know I mean, shout out to cuz right. And, uh, but yeah, so I think last time I seen you too, you had, you got a new design, which I'm, I'm waiting to get that shirt too. Yeah. You know I'm saying, you know, yeah, I got a couple this, if you go to purple, purple elephant clothing.com, I'm saying, I got a couple shirts on there right now, some hats. So let's check it out. Nice, nice, nice. And so yeah, I even I remember even uh, I wore I wore that uh, the black one, my black purple elephant one. Um, I think that that one fits a lot better. I would say like you know what I mean, and just, maybe just for people, um, you might want to get. For me, I had to get a smaller size. I felt like it just like hug, you know, it just looked a little bit better. Yeah, you know I mean so. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to you, man. I, I'm glad that you grinded, man. So, so this is, this is all about the NBA finals, man. It's all about the NBA. So, so I wanted to get on, get guys on because we don't have that much more time. This is the last series before, before the season's over. Now we could talk some draft stuff sometime soon. We could talk whatever, but this is the most important moment right now. So, I mean, game three just ended, right? You know what I mean? And what are just what are some just initial thoughts before we break down the game? What are some initial thoughts you have, Quelly? Uh, I think that it was like learning experience for for the Suns. I mean, the pressure mm -hmm. was on different venue. It's, it's it was different vibe, but we'll mm -hmm. see. So, yo, I was ready to come in here talk all types of sweep smoke. Like I was re I was ready just like yo get the brooms out. Like if I was because. Just the way, just the way I seen the way the Suns were playing, I was just like, yo, this this shit is over. Like, like it and the first game was ugly. Yeah. And then I'll just say that like this, I don't know, it, it and we'll we'll break it down, but it, it looks like it, my my I'm a, I'm gonna tell you what my tune is now, but it hasn't changed. And I, you know, I'm a bandwagon. I'm a I'm a bandwagon Suns fan. I don't care. Um, but I still got the Suns, but it's this is a series. This is a series. So um, but yeah, so before we get into uh, uh, game three, whatever, um, I did want to kind of recap, you know, just some things that we've seen in the first couple games, whatever. Um, so um, in game one, yo, the Suns, they come out and they're just on fire in, in game one, man. Paul was Paul was killing, you know, he was he dominated the Bucks. I mean, they really had no answer for him. You know, they was trying to switch people on him. He's just he's cooking whoever they put on him. They, he was just cooking them, whatever. Um, yeah. And, yeah, like 30 something that, that game. Yeah, I think he had like 37, 38 or something like that. Like he had, he had a real good game. Um Booker had a real good game. Um they were just balling. They were running, man. They were really running. And I just was like, yo, the the, the Bucks have nothing like they just didn't look like they had nothing for them, whatever. So, uh what, what do you think was like what was the key for for Phoenix in game 1? Why were they so dominant in game 1? I think Chris Paul actually getting buckets. A lot of times he don't like he's like I said, yeah. What thirty? What was, what was how many points did he have in that game? He might. Like, it was 37, 38 points. I feel. I feel yeah, like. so I feel like him dominating like that definitely helped them because that that don't you not gonna get that out of him all the time. Okay, he's gonna score, but he's gonna facilitate more by defense. Yeah. So, yeah, and it was it was it was really like yeah, it was almost like they had their own big three almost because yeah, Aiden you know Aiden been do doing well, man. Aiden's been playing well. I'll, I'll play. Yeah, all playoffs. Yeah, and like he probably got, he probably has the best shooting percentage of any player in the playoffs. Like, I mean, like you look at his stat line, he's you know eight for eleven. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, layups and dunks. Yeah, layups and dunks. Like he does, he does what he got to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, so I, th I think that was that was key. Um, and I don't know, just the Bucks. They just defensively, they just didn't know what was going on. Um, but yeah, after that game, I was just like, yeah, this is it's gonna be a quick series, whatever. And then, so game two. So I'll, I'll, I'll admit, I missed game two, bro. Like I thought, I thought game two was. I, I don't even know what day it was supposed to happen. I thought it was gonna be the day after it was, and then it's the next day, and I was like, and people talking about it. I'm like, oh shit, I missed game two. So, so can can you tell us what what was like? So the Suns won in game two as well. 
What was like the key for them winning in game two? It was Booker went off that game. Okay. Um, I believe yeah, um, Aiton did. Sure I know he had a double double. Yeah. But I think he had a five point double. Okay. Okay. And but that one was a little closer, like maybe like a seven or eight point win by the Suns, whatever. Um, did did it look like? And the question I guess I have is like, was was there something that the Bucks were doing in Game Two that kind of gave them momentum in the Game Three? Or or no? Did you just feel like nah, it's, it's a sweep. This this could be a sweep. I not feel like Game Two. I thought it was gonna be a sweep. Okay, after Game Two, you thought it was gonna be a sweep. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I, not even seeing the game, just seeing knowing the outcome, I was like, Psh. yeah, I mean, even though it wasn't the biggest win, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, they, they did what they got to do. They won their home games. This, this might be over, whatever. And then now let's get into tonight's game. And tonight, man, it was a it was a different story. And like you said, it, it probably was a learning experience for uh, the, the, the Suns, whatever. But like, I, and I got some talking points, but but um, yeah, man. What what do you think about Game Three, man? What was what was the key factors for you in that game? I don't know. Apparently, the the, the run went in like the second. I missed the second quarter because ah. the um the thing, the warning. So yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, and just yeah, for people, I don't know if anybody else. If you live in PA, Central PA, whatever. Yeah, you know I mean they they had a whole weather update. Um, it was like four or five minutes ago, right? Like they had a weather update, and they it basically yeah. it took it took like the, it, it took like all this time away. And then I felt like when it, it came back for a second, and then they went back to the report. And then once they went back, it was already halftime, and you're like, "Yo, I didn't even see what happened." Whatever. Oh no. Damn. And then you said, uh, "And you missed? Did you you missed the first quarter too?" I missed the first quarter too. Dang, and yeah, because you thought you I thought only got in the game. Uh, Second quarter. <laughs> oh damn! damn. Missed, I saw I basically missed the whole first half. First half. Oh man! And then after that, it was it was already kind of out of hand. And then fourth quarter, they kind of came back a little bit, but it was it was over. Okay. Well, all right. So, like I said, I was I was watching this game pretty pretty closely. Um, other than other than that weird lapse in there, um, this was the second game in a row. Giannis had a forty point game. So, like, I mean, I think he he might even have forty one in uh game two. But he had 41 tonight again. Um, so I think just just maybe maybe some type of momentum, individual momentum he came in with, whatever. And a lot of people were talking when when they lost game two. One thing I heard people talking was like, yeah, we, you can't blame Giannis. Can't blame Giannis. Like he had a real good game. You know what I mean? So so like he's he's starting to get that. Even if he loses, I feel like the series. Um, I, I think that he got that kind of monkey off his back where it's like, oh, he can't do this, he can't do that. They're gonna probably start saying like he needs help. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and it, whatever. Um, but then yeah, again with Giannis, fan, he went 13 for 17 from the free throw line. Tonight, yeah. 13 <laughs> for 17 from the he free was, throw line. He was, and it's crazy because like me and my boy was talking right before this, and we was like, yo, it's like, he snapped from the from the uh from the free throw line. Like it is, it's crazy when somebody say you you snap from a free throw line because he's so bad at it. Like, no, <laughs> for real. And that, yeah, that's snap like that for him. That's snapping. Like, it's snapping. like, it's, like it's, when you got seventeen shots and you made thirteen of them. Like what? Like yeah, we gotta do some math. What is that percent? It's high. And, and they were saying he was he, he sped it up. He, he sped up his uh his drone, So. Yeah, and yeah, they said they say yeah, like he probably wasn't in his head as much because they the counting whatever. Yo, is is the counting are 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 they not allowed to count or are they allowed to count? Because I they're, I've been hearing mixed things. They're they're allowed to count. They, oh, okay, you you can chant whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. But since they were in Milwaukee, they're not trying to distract them. So it's like, yeah. like, like more fans. Okay. Cause I thought I thought I heard something, and maybe it was just like people talking shit. But like I thought they were gonna start doing something if you if they kept doing that chant, whatever the the counting. Well, what can you do though? I don't what know. Can... I don't know what you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you could do. You know what I mean, yeah, you know I mean, you know how you know how it is, man. They try to yeah. ban niggas, whatever. You know what I mean. Um, another factor. Um, and actually, I want to kind of maybe look up his what he his game actually was. But Drew Holiday went off in this game. Like I don't know if you. you know what I mean. He like you know Giannis was getting everybody involved in this game, and Drew Holiday he just 
every, any any open shot that he had, I mean, any open shot that he created, he knocked it down. Like it was just like it was automatic almost. You know what I mean, like, um, so yeah, so Drew Holiday was a big factor in this game too. Um, yeah, let's see. What did he have? Let me look here. Matter of fact, I could share the screen with you too. Let's see. Let's see. Box score. I'm trying to I'm going too fast here. Box score. Yeah, let's see. Um, Drew Holiday. Yeah, Holiday had 21, but he just – and. Yeah, he was five for ten from from three point land. Yeah, so I, I just felt like he hit mad threes, and yeah, like most of his buckets were three pointers. Um, yeah, Giannis, 41, 13, and six. Um, but then if you look on the other side, then man, then we got we got Chris Paul. I mean, Chris Paul. I mean, eight for fourteen and nineteen points. They said he said that Booker like long. So yeah, they did. They did. Booker did. Yeah, that was probably the biggest thing. Booker did not have a good game. Three for 14, only 10 points. Um, yeah, I think they did. They did make that a note, though. But maybe do you think do you think it's because they felt like they were out of out of the game? That they, yeah, I think they felt like it was it was. I think uh, Monty Williams felt like the game was already like won. So OK. Like, don't don't want him to get hurt. I mean, I'm just sitting out because yeah. Chris Ball was still out there. And I feel like Chris Ball was still out there because he's. He's a little older, so he just want to get 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 his in real quick. Yeah, get his in, get his in. Isn't isn't Giannis still hurt though? Isn't Giannis even hurt? Yeah, because they. Well, I don't know. That, I I seen something like I said. A lot. Of, that's why I don't follow like certain like just pundits and whatever. And then and like they What's just saying the, is he out here? They're like limping and shit. Yeah, they're saying like like I guess he said that um, he shouldn't even be playing yet. Yeah, I mean, like he said that on his own mouth, and I'm thinking, like, are you trying to add dramatics to this? Like, yeah, I mean, to make it like a hero story, or are you trying to give yourself an excuse if you lose? Both. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, it makes me think that. So I'm thinking, like, but then this nigga's balling out. So yeah, so Giannis, 13 for 17, the the 40 point game. Drew Holiday, I think that home. I mean, people say it's it's tough to play in Milwaukee. I think the home court advantage probably played a played a factor. Especially with the counting and the, the three pointers, whatever. But defensively, it just looked like they was just anything that they were, anything that the Suns were trying to do inside the paint, like they, they was they was not like they was rim protecting, they was stealing, they was stealing uh, the out, the, you know, the little passes inside into the post, whatever. Um, it was nothing easy. They weren't letting they weren't letting them have anything easy this game. Yeah. Um, and then I I feel like just overall they controlled that pace. Because there were flashes even in the second quarter, maybe even a little bit in the third, where where um they would uh like it went, if the sun started running and like getting that ball up the court, whatever it, it was looking like okay, all right, maybe yeah, because I think it was the second quarter they had got it down to like four points. Um, Cam Johnson got this crazy dunk, whatever on on uh, PJ Tucker, and they called they called the the blocking foul, and I was like, did they did you see that one? No. Nah. I, I so saw and, and I, I like I walked away, but they challenged it, and I think they end up giving them the charge because yo PJ Tucker got there, like he got there, he got set, whatever, and uh, they still called the block, but probably just in in fast motion, um, it looked like a block, but nah, like but the bull cam, he he just he, he yammed on him, bro, like it was crazy, um, and like the momentum was crazy then, but then the Bucks they like Drew Holiday hit he, he hit like two different threes coming down the court. And then it just it got them back up to like nine points, stuff like that. And then then it was like it felt like they were smooth sailing after that. Um, so so what what do you think is gonna happen in game four? If we if we had to give some predictions for game four. Uh I feel like the um I feel like the Suns gonna bounce back. Okay. I feel like I feel like them Booker, because he's he not gonna have 10 points next game. Like he's not gonna have 10. Yeah. So and then as long as everybody else, like Jay Crowder was hitting threes out there still. So as yeah. long as he's hitting, they straight. I feel like they're going to bounce back next game. I, I don't know if mm, – I'll say they're going to win the next game. Think they're going to bounce back? Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't. I'm not. You know, it's it's funny because you know we we criticize like these analysts, whatever, and they be like, oh, they just be flip flopping, whatever. Um, and so you know when you don't got no team for real, you don't really got no team. Yeah, you you find yourself in the middle of that. 
Um, I think the Suns are still going to win the series. I still got the Suns winning. But I would not be surprised, though, if in game four, I went, if, if the Bucks play like this, they're going to win. Like, yeah, I mean, and, and they might not, they're not going to have a 20 point win, whatever. But if they play their game, they control the pace. If they play good defense, if Giannis, if Giannis get hit from the free throw line, then, then they tie it up, whatever. But I think, I think they're going to get that momentum back. I think, I think game four is going to be more competitive, though. Um, and, um, yeah, because in this game, it depended on how I was going to look at the series. So if 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 Phoenix won tonight, I was going to say sweep. If it was a close game and Phoenix lost, but it was still like a close game, like maybe like at the maybe it was like a back and forth at the end, and they just lost on like a, a you know a crazy shot or something like that. I would have said I would have said Suns and fives, but the way that the Bucks kind of dominated tonight. I, and I'm gonna kind of go into my my series outcome. I think it's Suns and Six, though Suns and Six, but right. and they're gonna yeah. So they're gonna have to. So they're gonna lose this game. They're gonna lose the, this. They might lose game four, but then they're gonna win the next two. Whatever. So what do you think? What, what's your series outcome? If you had to give a series outcome, I say I've been saying Suns and Six. Oh, you've been uh, saying Suns and Six. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been fucking around with people online talking about. I've been going for the Bucks. I I hate the fucking Bucks. Like why I, do you why do you hate the Bucks? I can't be honest, man. Like really? Why? This, why? 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 This one trick pony ass nigga. And he don't never. He's supposed to be defensive player of the year. Don't ever guard the best player ever. He was he was playing defense tonight though. Who was he guarding? Uh he was guarding a little bit of everybody, but yeah, he wasn't guarding. Yeah, he wasn't like guarding like somebody like he. But that's yeah, the thing that it was it was crazy. It was like a good it was good team defense. Anytime somebody w- was slashing, the, like he was coming out of nowhere, and he I felt like he was just altering shots. Brook Lopez was altering shots. It's more like it's more like when they played the last series against Brooklyn. Like, I know they won, mm-hmm. or not in the last series, the series before. Brooklyn like they, like they beat Brooklyn, but he would hand guard KD not one minute of that series. Yeah, okay. he's supposed to be all right. So. Break. All right, well, but who on all right, so think about think about the Suns and how how their team is constructed. Who is he supposed to keep? He's supposed to keep Booker? You want him to keep Booker? Yeah, he's supposed to keep Booker. What? No, I don't know. I don't but then wouldn't that does that not create a miss that don't create no kind of other mismatch that, that the Suns can exploit then? Not for them. Cause I guess it's like not. it's who Crowder. Or Aiden, right? Wouldn't he be? Maybe he's keeping eight. No, he's not keeping Aiden. No, nah, Brook Lopez. Yeah, yeah, he might be right, man. He riding from that smoke. I, I don't, I don't mind. I, I like Giannis overall. Like, but I understand the criticism. Like, yeah, because you know, um, because yeah, like you know, it, it's crazy because it's like it's he might be similar to Ben Simmons, but you know, just in the, in the sense that he can't shoot, whatever, but he's, he's yeah. I feel like he's way better than Ben, I don't know, he's just, like, better than Ben Simmons, just overall, like, because what they, he's, what he's really him, good at, he's uh, dominant at, though. Yeah, they call that nigga, uh, Ben Simmons with confidence. Ben Simmons, <laughs> <laughs> Ben Simmons, with, yeah, he do, he do walk around with a different kind of swag, man, so, so, all right, Suns and Six, but then how, how, all right, if you say the Suns and Six, how do you think the series is gonna go, like, like, what's, so you think like they're gonna win? Suns are gonna win Game Four, but then they're yeah. gonna win game five. Game four. I think they're gonna win Game Four because, like I said, Booker's gonna probably have a like a great game next game. Okay, Man's on, I know he's mad as hell right now. <laughs> like you know what I mean, so um, I feel like he's gonna snap, like snap, snap. Okay, and then, they, and then it's gonna be like a, a wake up call for like the Bucks the game after that. Okay, okay, so they're gonna win then. Like, like I, I feel like the last like that game six is going it's going to grind out. Okay, okay, yeah, Suns and six. Um, like I said, they got to get running, man. They got they got to run. Uh, Booker got to make shots. I think yeah, I think and he's he's just showing at least in the playoffs that he he can bounce back. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I think the I think the buck the Bucks are hungry though. They they showed at least tonight that they're hungry. At the very least, yeah. they they they're not gonna just walk away. So, um, they're the team like they they, yeah. they got the. Team. So I feel like they was like, all right, let's wake up. Like yeah. we home first game home, yeah. and that's a big thing. Like both these teams haven't been here in ever. Yeah, yeah. But at least like the Bucks fans are like kind of used to having a winning streak like years ago. 
Yeah, yeah. I feel like now, now that they're back, all that momentum, all that yeah. energy here was just like all, all time high. That's why this game was so crazy. But. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of I feel like a lot of see a lot of NBA finals start off 2-0. Like it just they just do. Like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes they don't, but like I just feel like it's not, it's not and they were saying the commentators are saying, like, it don't matter even if you're up. That that for that game, the game three is is a tough game, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know, first swing. Yeah, it's that it's that swing, it's that it really is a momentum, you know what I mean? So that's good. Um uh yeah, so let's switch it up, man. Um uh we're still talking about basketball. Um, so man. You know, MVP, right? You know, we the the award is is decide, like we hear about the award in the middle of the playoffs, whatever. You know, it feels like over the last several years. Like, think about the MVPs in the last like you know several years. I feel like there's like an MVP curse, maybe, right? Um, and, and it makes people feel like you know, obviously, people want the playoffs included, um, or or they just feel like the announcement should be later. So. Um, Jokic was the MVP, which, you know, at the time, it definitely felt like he deserved it because of going by that criteria, right? Um, but if if we could do a MVP do-over, right, if we could just say, yo, let's, let's pick a new MVP, man, like, you know, and, and base it on – it don't have to be the champion, but, like, you know, just based on somebody that kind of went a little further, who would you say is the MVP? Me, personally, like, even if it is – even though it is a, a – Regular season award, I would still give it to CP3. That's why. Oh, I, that's, yo, we on the same. That's all I'm on the gate, man. Like he, the whole reason why this team is even in the fucking playoffs. Man. Yo, truly, true MVP. Like true, true. MVP. Like yo, and like, and, and when you think about, because I was talking about CP3 uh, last night with my boy, and then it was crazy because I was like, yo, this nigga is like, he really should be the MVP because. It don't like every thing about all the teams, all the teams he play for, he makes them better. Like it's, yeah, you know I mean, he he gives them some every team he play for because you know he played wait last year he played for the Thunder, right? Yeah, and they took he took them and he he pushed the Rockets to Game Seven. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's like yo, this nigga is like yo, he's the man. Like so he really is a he is a goat. Obviously, one of the best yeah. point guards ever. He's definitely a goat, oh, definitely a Hall of Famer, but like definitely. That's what an MVP is, most valuable player. Mm-hmm. Like, he, because he adds value to any team he goes to. Every team, yeah. Yo, here's a crazy thing. So, my boy Rob was like, this is, this is uh, before the season started. He kept saying, yo, man, like, the, the Bucks, man, they should, because they still had Bledsoe, right? Like, last yeah. year? No, not, so, not last year. Or not last year? Last year. Okay. Um, whenever, like, whenever, before they got Drew Holiday, before they decided to get Drew Holiday, um, he was, he was just really adamant. He was like, yo, fan, they should get CP3. He's like, yo, they should get Chris Paul. Chris Paul would just, Chris Paul would take him over the top, take him over the top. And I just think it's like, it's crazy that he's in the finals against the Bucks. You know what I mean? And it's like, yo, yeah, if, cause yeah, if, if CP3 was on the Bucks, no question, right? Like. It'd be a lot better. <laughs> well, yeah, the Bucks would be a lot better. But I think I think it'd be like I think they would have been the front runners in the beginning of the season. I think, you know, what I mean, and and mm. yeah, I, I don't know, maybe maybe not because yeah, I guess a healthy LeBron, healthy. Yeah, you know healthy, how the, the league feels about LeBron. But yeah, yeah, maybe maybe a- I'm, yeah, I'm, maybe I'm getting too excited. Maybe I'm getting too excited. <laughs> but uh, I I think that would have been a team that people would have been like at least on the East they'd have been like, yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. East, yeah, you y'all got that if you got CP3, but. I think it's cool that he's he's there, um, and uh, he's doing what he's doing, man. But yeah, CP3, he would be my MVP if if I had to choose um, again. And um, yo, man, so is this like how you, how you feel about this playoffs overall, man? Is this has this been the most exciting playoffs you've seen? Did you like the bubble play? Because I didn't watch the bubble playoffs. Oh, um, last year, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't. Them. I didn't watch it. I watched them. Uh, I feel like. This this one isn't the best playoffs only because of all the injuries. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And you know, not like my boy Kawhi got injured, so <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying. But yeah, like I feel like all these injuries, man. Like Matt has got injured, so yeah. Uh, then do do you think it's because of like how they started the season? Because that's what LeBron LeBron kept. You know how you yeah, know he he reaching, liked to make some excuses. Story, man. He reached for that. He's like he's trying to make a story out of it, but no, I don't, I don't feel like no. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The season started late, like, and, and you played less games. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, yeah, you played 10 less games, and you probably set out. You set out more than 10 games, too, nigga. Like, yeah. Yeah, we on your own. Stop bitching, <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. And that's the thing, too, is, like, yo, at some point, like, shit got to get back on track. So, like, they had to kind of start the season when they had to. Because even though, yeah. right now, it's still ending late, but it's not ending as late. So, next year won't be that bad. Like, yeah. it'll be. People, but I'm, I'm sure that you're going to find somebody that complains, like, yo, man, we didn't get into training. We didn't get to draft our team, or we didn't get to get into training camp until, you know, August or whatever. And be like, all right, bro, like. You'll be all right, fam. You're professional. You you play basketball for money. Like, yeah, you know I mean, right. like it's your profession. Like, deal with it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking right. game. Yeah, you know I mean, um, so yeah, maybe it's not the best playoffs. Um, in recent, but I think it's most exciting. I mean, most different. Exciting. Yeah, different. I like the parody. Um, yeah. which makes me think. Um, and this is this is a question I got. Um, probably one last question. Um, do you think that just the way that we, we see these teams, you see, you see kind of like how, how Phoenix was constructed, right? You got, you got mostly, you know, the core of their team is drafted players, right? You know what I mean? And whether maybe they got a draft trade, like with Bridges, whatever. Um, yeah. and you, and you got, you got Booker, you got, you got Aiton, right? You got a core of guys that you drafted and granted you had to suffer. You had to be at the bottom to, to do that, whatever. And then you, <laughs> and then you add just a couple pieces, you add a veteran, like like Chris Paul, you add a Crowder and stuff like that, um, and and you see like how just successful whatever, um, and then even even the Bucks like the Bucks, you know I mean they don't they they did do they didn't do like super team moves, but they just you know made couple couple moves here and there, but yeah like the core of their team is like you know Giannis and Middleton, those are like drafted players, you know I mean, so do you think like do you think that we might see a trend back into like more traditional style of, of team construction? Do you think the super team is dead? No. Okay. I think we're still going to fucking try to team up. Like all, all, all the, the, the like rumors and all that shit always going to go on. Yeah. Uh, and trying to players trying to grab players and shit. They even asked Dame Lillard like recently. Yeah. Like people want to talk about, joining up while they at the uh, team USA joint. He said, yeah, probably. Yeah. So so yeah, uh, that shit ain't going nowhere. Yeah, the shit ain't going so it might not would you say? The pressure's always gonna be on for for niggas to like join teams or or to, like wanna wanna get a ring so bad like you just join a nigga real quick. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is I don't I don't mind uh and I think people try to do it in the prime of their career so they don't look like ring chasers, but then you still look like a ring chaser. Yeah. I mean, because they you know it makes you know it somewhat makes sense. Yeah, I mean you've been in the league for 15 years and you know you getting you get in bench minutes and you know, oh all right, I joined this team, I can make I can I can be a spark off the bench and, and maybe I win a title. But like, yeah, you got guys in the middle of their primes and they're like, Oh yo, yo, let's Oh, yeah, this would be cool. and you know I think some people I, I think it was cool in the beginning, but we we know who made it worse. You know I mean, and <laughs> we know who made it a like a thing that's like to hate. It's like all right, come on, man. Like you know right. your, your boy, you know our boy, our boy uh, LeBron. But uh, I know I feel like I'm probably LeBron. Like they probably put me in like a skip list category, like a LeBron hater. But like I'm just a. <laughs> I respect them. I just, it's, I'm just, yeah. I think when you when you're at such a high level, you get you just get more critique. That's just, um, that's just how it is. Yeah. So, and then last last question, last thing, last thing. Yo, I was I was like watching ESPN yesterday, Sports Center, and I don't never watch Sports Center, right? Like, so I'm I'm at I'm at my homie crib, and he got it on, and I see these highlights, right? And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is happening? And the fucking United States, now granted, is exhibition game. Lost to Nigeria. These niggas lost to Nigeria. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Now, all right. So <laughs> you know, it's funny because then then the memes start start. People create a meme quick. So then I started seeing LeBron James and KD comparisons. It's like it was like LeBron's team USA. KD's team USA and I'm like, are y'all but you must <laughs> got no lives? Like, what the hell? Like, that's on it quick, on it quick. That's you. That's where you went. Yeah, you know I mean, like, but all right, 
fair enough, because they should not have lost to Nigeria. What the fuck happened? What the fuck happened in that game, man? I have no idea. I just know that I just said, kept seeing some tweets talking about they were all playing bad, and that was it. Yeah, Something like, long. yo, yeah, I see. Well, in the highlights, they just kept showing Tatum missing layups and shit. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, they're missing, just missing, like, gimmies. Like, you know what I mean? And um, it just seemed like, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that the team had, like, a, a, a lead that they, the USA, they were trying to chip off, but, like, they, they worked hard to, they worked hard at the end, but it was, it was too little too late. I mean. But I thought I thought they might have the way they were kind of narrating the I thought like maybe uh, USA came back whatever but like no they 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 lost whatever and I think it said in the London Olympics they beat Nigeria by eighty seven points did you know that <laughs> <laughs> they beat them by like eighty I I seen the stat now I'm a, I'm gonna verify that you know what I mean before this comes out just to make sure but. I seen it say it was like a little blurb. It was like London in the London Olympics. Um, they beat Nigeria by 87 points. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Whatever. So so do is Team USA, are they in danger? No, nah, I don't think they're gonna be in danger. I think they'll they'll play better. It's just that's just like their first I think it's their first game, man. Right? Yeah, it's first, yeah, it's an exhibition. It don't it don't count against their Olympic record or nothing like that. It's just it's really a scrimmage. It's a scrimmage. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Popovich, he, he basically said, like, you know, they have four practices. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, he said the other team, Nigeria, they've been practicing for three weeks together. Which, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, you know, I respect it. Um, but, you know, some people might say that's an excuse. Um, but I understand. But, like, I think Pop is going to get them back where they need to be, though. Pop's a great coach. Yeah, Pop's a great coach. So, all right, man. So that's uh that wraps up um our sports talk, man. Um, yeah, man. I'm I'm glad you got on, man. Yo, re- returning guests. Um, yo, man. Like yo, Quelly. Like yo, man. I I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you for coming back, and obviously you can come back again. Um, yo, your your episode, like you know, I'm, I'm real happy about it. Like you're you're a very important episode. Yeah, you know I mean, like I said, you you got this joint started. Um. And just even if people don't know the story about it, right? Like when I told you about, uh, I, I told you the day of, like when we recorded, and I was like, yo, fam, I got this idea for this podcast. I was like, yo, I want you to be my first guest. You know what I mean? Whatever. And then I said, I said, yo, man, like uh, when, when you feel it, we record, he was like, oh, he was like, oh, at night, whatever, whatever. And I said, what, you want to do it tonight? And then he was like, yeah. And like, yo, so, yo, Quelly, man, like a, a real one, uh, you know, a day one. Um, my man's yo, I, I really appreciate you, bro. Because you, you, you always, you always support, always support, yeah, definitely, man. Always support. Like I said, man, if if you haven't already, go cop that purple elephant. Um, uh, where where can people find you, man? You know what I mean, just a reminder, where can people find you, bro? Purpleelephantclothing.com. There you go, purpleelephantclothing.com. <laughs> More stuff coming soon. Always, I got a, I, st- I still got a bunch of like designs and drawings that I haven't even. Tony and so that's the that's wow. side. And I'm waiting for a uh, you know, whatever that whatever it's gonna look like, but a G High Mo Purple Elephant, you know, collab. Yeah, you know I mean, that'd be dope. Yeah, you know I mean, if yeah, you get that off. Have, that's the sub. All right. Well, this concludes uh the 280 plus podcast. Uh and this this sports segment that I'm just trying, whatever. You know, we're we gonna see when we get this out. Um, but yeah, man, tune in again every Wednesday. Uh, and if you haven't, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. All right. Peace.